we have determined the number of uh, KCL equations. Now, similarly, we have to determine the number of KVL equations that we can write for a circuit with n nodes and b branches. Okay. Now, this is slightly more complicated than counting the number of uh, Kirchhoff's current law equations, but of course, still can be done. I will still consider the same circuit. Okay. One, two, three, four nodes and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight branches. Okay. So now how do we count the number of KVL equations? First of all, we write K V L equation around loops. Okay. So, there is one K V L equation for every loop okay. and we have to find the number of independent loops. By independent loops, I mean for instance, this branches 1 and 2 form a loop, branches 1 6 3 form a loop branches 2 6 3 also form a loop. There are 3 loops, but it turns out there are only 2 independent loops. Okay. So, we can take either this loop and that loop or any 2 of them. Okay. Only 2 of them will be independent. So, how do we form uh, independent loops? To discuss this efficiently without rewriting the circuit every time, I will introduce the concept of the graph of a circuit. The graph of a circuit is nothing but basically the same topology, the same nodes and branches, but we are not worried about uh, what the branches contain, what elements there are. Okay. So, these are uh, used for uh, discussing general properties of uh, uh, circuits. So, we do not worry about what elements there are, we simply denote each of them by a line. Okay. So, the graph of this would be the same number of uh, nodes. Okay. We have the four nodes and eight branches. Okay. Graphs are widely used for analyzing general properties of networks, okay, and there is a lot of theory behind it, but for us basically it is a simple depiction of the circuit. Okay. So, that is all we are going to use that for. And our goal right now is to find the number of independent loops in this graph. Okay. To do that, let me redraw the graph over here. Okay. So, to count the number of uh, independent loops, what we do is first form a what is known as a tree. Okay. Now, what is a tree? Tree is a set of uh, branches, which is basically a subset of all the branches. subset of B branches of the circuit, which traverse all the nodes. Okay. 
So, all nodes should have at least one branch connected to it. but without forming a loop. Okay. So, this should be clear if I show an example there can be many trees okay. there are many many possibilities, but you can start from any of them. So, let me show you one example of a tree. So, these are the four nodes and I will take branches 1, 6 and 7. Okay. So, 1, 6, 7. So, clearly all four nodes have at least uh, one branch and there is no loop formed yet. Of course, this is not the only tree that is possible. There are so many others. You can uh, just take this graph and then form them yourselves. I will show you just one other example. So, again so I can take these branches okay these three branches and there will be branches six seven and three and again we have a tree and all nodes are connected to at least one branch but there is no loop okay so this is also a tree and you can form many others now one thing you notice is that both of these trees right they have three branches okay and you can sit and make any number of trees you can from this circuit and you will find that all of them will have three branches now is this a coincidence oh, of course not if you have n nodes right you start from one node you go to the next one you order the nodes in any which way you want i have uh, in this case shown 1, 2, 3, 4, but you could also have done 1, 2, 3, 4 etcetera. You take any ordering of the nodes, then you connect branches from uh, node 1 to node 2, node 2 to node 3 and so on. So, clearly in going from node 1 to node n by connecting a branch between every successive pair of nodes, you will have n minus 1 branches. So, if you have n nodes, the tree for the circuit will contain n minus 1 branches. Okay. So, there will be n minus 1 branches in an n node circuit. Okay. So, remember we are starting off with the circuit with b branches and out of that we will take n minus 1 branches okay, to form the tree. So, now what next? So, it must be pretty obvious what is coming next. Now, if I have a tree, what do I have? I have branches connecting every node of the circuit and there is no loop yet. Now, if I add any more branch that is for instance, here I have taken branches 1, 6 and 7. So, what I have left out are, I will show them with uh, dashed lines. Okay. I had left out 2, 3, 4, 5 and 8. It is pretty obvious that to a tree, if you add any of the remaining branches, you will form a loop. Okay. So, if I add branch 2, there will be a loop here. If I add branch 3, there will be a loop over there and if I add branch 8, there will be a loop formed by branches 6, 7 and 8. Okay. So, once you have a tree, you add any branch to it you will form a loop. Okay. So, now it is very easy to count the number of loops. So, we have a circuit with n nodes and b branches and a circuit with n nodes will have n minus 1 uh, branches in the tree. Now, out of b branches, if you take out n minus 1, we will have b minus n plus 1 
remaining branches which is also called the coterie okay now introducing each of these b minus n plus 1 branches to the tree will form a new loop okay so what you do is you first form a tree and then you take these branches one by one and add them that is you take one of these branches you form one loop and you remove that you take another branch you form another loop and so on okay so in our particular example we'll start with the let's say this particular tree okay so we had let me put this down we had four nodes and eight branches so we have three branches in the tree and then five remaining branches so we'll have five independent loops that is we have b minus 1 independent loops and consequently b minus 1 independent kirchhoff's voltage law equations okay so just to illustrate this i will show the loops so to this i add branch number 1 i form a loop branch number 2 i form another loop branch number 4 i form another loop branch number 5 another loop and branch number 8 another loop okay so there are five loops and i can have b minus n plus 1 kirchhoff's voltage law equations okay so in an n node circuit we have n minus 1 kcl equations and in an n node b branch circuit we have b minus n plus 1 kvl equations okay so earlier we said that we have to solve for uh, uh, 2b variables now let's see how we get the 2b equations where do we get them from first of all we have n minus 1 kcl equations so this is for an n node b branch circuit so n minus 1 kcl equations b minus n plus 1 kvl equations and these two together will give us b equations and also we have b branches so each branch will have its current voltage relationship so we have b iv relationships which give you b more equations so together we have two b equations and by solving these we can solve for two b variables and what are the two b variables b currents and b voltages in each of the b branches okay so this is how we set up the equations and solve for every variable in the circuit now what we'll do is we'll look at a few methods of circuit analysis now of course it's not always that you use the systematic way of writing down all the equations and solving for every variable we'll also look at certain ad hoc methods that we use and then we'll go on to systematic methods which you have to use when you have somewhat complicated circuits especially circuits with multiple sources it turns out that when you have a single source there are many simplifying uh, uh, techniques that you can use uh, but when you have multiple sources you have to be a little more systematic okay 